Good day everyone, so I'm going to play two clips and I'll respond to each one of them in return, but the timestamps are here if you wish to skip around and also in the description. Right, let's begin. She was always the best healer in the game and they introduced corrosion then. No, she was terrible. Bennett was better. But was he really better? If we look here at the GC sim and we look specifically at dedicated Bennett healer builds, what we will find is that the effective healing per second for the team is not as high as you might think for like a Bennett. But if you look at your Kokomi teams, you'll find that the effective healing per second in your Kokomi teams is a lot higher. In fact, it's significantly higher. So really, what gives here? Well, here is the first big mistake Tecton makes. He doesn't understand how Bennett's healing works. So as you can see here in the config file, we've got a healer build Bennett. And as we now start stepping through the frame by frames in the combat simulation, you'll notice at some point we actually use Black Farina's Elemental Burst, so that's going to boost Bennett's healing a bit. But you can see there it is on screen, we've bursted with Bennett, there's Fantastic Voyage, but there is no healing because Bennett does not heal if your characters are above 70% HP, so you cannot count that healing. You can only see now when we swap to Hu Tao and use her skill and draining her HP that the Inspiration field takes effect. Notice on the screen that it says this is a healing event. Bennett heals for 5,600. There is a bit of a heal bonus. So the final amount is 8,600 or about 8,700 effectively when you round that up. So that is what Bennett heals per second if he heals. In contrast, if I look at Kokomi and I pretty much put on a build as she was three years ago and you can cross-reference what you see on screen with the builds that I've had on my channel since I've been around since Kokomi came out. What you'll notice is that without any decent artifacts, we are going to absolutely curb stomp what Bennett does in terms of healing. In fact, let's assume that Bennett for the moment actually heals. So we don't, by the way, we don't have C2, but let's assume Bennett for the moment didn't heal 8,700, but healed 11,000. Let's assume we're going to go by Tecto whale built Bennett let's say he had like the jade cut or something how is that then going to compare against a little old humble Kokomi here without her C2 without any five-star weapons and so on well you'll see in just a moment once again how deceptive healing per second can actually be so what i'm going to do now is use kokomi's elemental burst then i'm going to cast a jellyfish so that's what the jellyfish does and then kokomi heals per tick 1245 we can get this amount twice per second and if you've then multiplied that by four so it's one two four five multiplied by 2 multiplied by 4 because I've got 4 party members plus adding the jellyfish's healing and so on then you'll find that we're effectively healing for about 13,359 and that is discounting the healing from prototype amber which if you amortize it over a 10 second window instead of a 6 second window then you can effectively round that from 870 to about 500 so let's just be generous so effectively kokomi heals per second 13,800 compared to a well-built Bennett which is unrealistic for most people and that just means that at the time and even right now so this isn't just a three-year-old meta take that we're correcting it's the exact same math that applies today Kokomi heals more right now and way back when than Bennett did even under the assumption that Bennett is running 11k healing ticks per second and the summary or the crux of this argument lies in how these characters heal in that the healing for Bennett was overestimated due to the fact that he's not always going to heal his party and therefore you cannot count that healing whereas with Kokomi she is going to heal the party continuously hence her healing or her raw healing numbers are going to be higher the reason why the numbers in the GC sim calcs are less than the actual or like theoretical optimals is because you're playing a team game you've got to rotate between different characters and that's why the effective healing per like second for the entire team is a lot lower so in simple terms what tectone has said is absolute rubbish and we've proven it mathematically
So you were upset when they released Kikomi and she was the worst character in the entire game as of time of release. You were upset that I said the character was bad because she was the worst character in the game. She got better years later when they added Dendro. So was Kokomi so bad that she eventually got better with Dendro and the like? Well, three years ago, I wrote a, an opinion piece on Kokomi detailing how her kit is one which revolves around role consolidation and compression. And I predicted that these are the necessary ingredients for her to play well with other characters in the game. So rather than thinking that Kokomi herself got better, what you could argue is that fundamentally from the beginning in her kit, she had all the ingredients necessary that would enable Enable her to thrive in a variety of team comps and this is mostly because of her role consolidation as a character and with that there's obviously the contrapositive in that as Genshin Impact releases more and more specialist units that can fulfill niches Kokomi's utility is going to then diminish and that has also held true up until this day so this is really what I want to debunk from what Tectone has said. A, he has got it completely wrong. When Kokomi came out, she was not the worst character in the game, simply because she had team options, and those team options were effective at that time in the Abyss. Those team options were Taser, was Kokomon, and Running and Ayaka Freeze team. Those were the popular options that you could run with Kokomi. There are some niche cases, like for instance, if you had a C6 Kokomi, you could then obviously run her as a main DPS and get quite a bit of success. Other options also included the Kokomi banner composition with Shingshu, Rosaria and Beidou. And if you just had a bit of energy recharge, you could effectively run like a physical um, clam Kokomi. So you did like 40k bubble pops with the Ocean U clam set in an AoE together with Kokomi and Shingshu and Beidou's damage all like kicking in because it all synergized. So you you had pretty effective teams even though the damage ceiling of that team wasn't as effective these are just some variants it's all on my channel and on other channels as well so i can really honestly say that to say that kokomi was the worst character in the game is just false precisely because she had more team options than the so-called worst characters in the game like amber or like chi chi and that is just a fact she was not the worst character at all and the amount of videos on this channel and on other channels literally prove it. We had success in the Spiral Abyss, the most difficult content, Floor 12, and we beat it. There's, I don't think there's any much, there's like much more proof that you need. Like, could you do it faster with other teams? Yeah, but you could still do it very comfortably. In fact, comfort was one of the big selling points of Kokomi. If you look at the Kaching mains guide that they put out at the time, one of the things that they highlighted was, especially for casual players, which is the bulk of the Genshin audience, how comfortable Kokomi is in allowing you to play this battle healer style. And I've spoken about this as well and analyzed this, but yes, Kokomi was very well designed in terms of dealing with the difficulties in Inazuma for the casual players, never minding the fact that Hoyo wanted to give us some Rift Hound content as well, but we'll talk a bit about that in just a bit. So the main thing that people really want to know is, did Kokomi really get better with Dendro? Actually, no, because the moment that Shenhe arrived, we had one of the strongest like meta teams for Ayaka that came out, and that is Shenhe, Ayaka, Kokomi, and Kazu. And even to this day, uh, when Freeze is semi viable or at least not unplayable in this power abyss, that team is just so incredibly strong and good, even stronger than in some cases the Mona variant. And we've seen this in speedruns as well, which we've talked about once again on this channel in a lot of detail precisely because with Kokomi's jellyfish and Shenna's field uh, especially from a speedrunning perspective you can have multiple waves being cleared out in a single take it's it's really good so with Shenna we obviously had an upgrade to the Ayaka freeze teams that we've had so in fact you could say that that really solidified Kokomi's position in the meta we also had things like Kokomi being able to work with Ganyu and so on but again those were less popular options sticking with popular 
options you could also run Kokomi and Yaimiko very comfortably together that was another taser variant that was really successful for those of us that played it at the time and we also had the introduction of Yelon which then solidified a new team composition and that was Monohydro in fact Monohydro is one of Kokomi's stronger um, teams even to this day back when ba back way back when we had Yelon, Shingshu, Kokomi and then obviously some animal unit for trading resistance right now we just kicked out Shingshu because he's useless and we put in Farina because it's just that much better so Kokomi herself always had team options and she was always evolving right before Dendro with these different team options in fact with the release of Kuki Shinobu, you even had another variant of Sukokomon that you can play, although I do think that might be a bit too niche for a lot of people. What ha effectively happens with Kokomi is that because of her generalist nature and being able to attack, defend or buff, she effectively slots into many teams that well. And hence when Dendro came out, it wasn't a question of now Kokomi getting better, but Kokomi just naturally fitting into Dendro. Just think a bit about it. A character that has continuously gotten better over time, as some people might have put it, now suddenly finds success in Dendro and even in Fontaine. Does that sound like a character that needed Dendro to become good like Tecton said? Well no, a character like that would be Kaching. Kaching really didn't shine in terms of the meta prior to Dendro. She got a bit of an uplift after Dendro and then after that there was nothing that happened for the character. That is a classic case of a character that got good because of a specific mechanic. In Kokomi's case, her kit was fundamentally from the beginning designed to be one of a generalist support and that enabled her to take full advantage of Dendro. In particular, Kokomi benefited because she has the ability to ramp up or slow down her hydro production in a very flexible way and because she can heal and tank and do all of these other things at the same time she was just a natural fit into Nilo Bloom teams as well as into AoE um, Hyper Bloom teams and some Virgin teams that you could use her in. So this is a case where Kokomi's role compression, what was fundamental to her kit like we said when she came out that is what enabled her to work well with Dendro and to continue working well even after Dendro. So when Fontaine released, Kokomi worked really well with Farina like I talked about before. And this is once again just due to the very nature of Kokomi's kit being able to fulfill multiple roles in your Mono Hydro team. In fact, I would actually argue that Fontaine was a bit less successful than Sumeru because the characters that they released were more specialist characters. So these characters, for instance, like Linny, would do an incredible amount of damage if you fulfilled certain conditions. It was the same with Raisley and Nuvalet is just a in a class of his own. So it's not like there were many other characters that benefited from these hyper carries that came out but certainly when Navia came out you suddenly had a new team composition where Kokomi could be played with Goro and Farina and whilst not the strongest Navia team this was certainly a viable and good enough team for Kokomi and for us as Kokomi mains to alternatively play in these power abyss as well. And this is just what I continue anticipating. If we don't get more niche hyper carries from Fontaine, but other more interesting characters, then Kokomi is just going to continue to shine because of the fundamental kit that she has in that she is a role compressor. And that is why I love Kokomi. There is so much to love about this character in terms of how flexible she is. And it's also why I continue to make content on her. Thanks for watching.